Hi, Uli here. This is a quick intro about AutoHotKey. AutoHotKey is a powerful scripting language for Windows that allows you to automate various tasks by creating custom scripts. The first version of AutoHotKey launched about 20 years ago, like November 2003, and uh, version 2 in September 2023, like 20 years after the first version. You can download AutoHotKey from this website, click here on the download, and you have two versions. You have the version 2, and as you can see, the version 1, what is already deprecated, so I would not recommend to download that one. So why should you use AutoHotKey? For example, you're running an app, waiting till the app is launched and doing some stuff. For example, moving the app to a certain position on your screen. Some apps open always in the default position, so what's quite annoying. Sending shortcuts. When an app launched and you want to do things, you usually always do with the mouse or some shortcuts. When you install AutoHotKey, there's coming an app called AutoHotKey Dash, where you can run different kinds of tasks, like you open your scripts, compile a script, and here you can browse for a file, add the custom icon, you see the version you want to execute, and so on. Another app is like what I found the most interesting is this Windows Spy here. What you can do here, for example, you see here that's the Windows Dash. You see the H key class. You can use that to run the program, even like this outward key. You can spy here on Chrome. You see the mouse, the window size, and so on. My first use of Outward Key, like 15 years ago, I programmed my first Windows app with Outward Key, as it's very easy to create GUIs. I used to program only for the web, like JavaScript, PHP, and so on. Back then, I used an editor called Ultra Edit 32. There's a script written in Outward Key to adapt the editor for Outward Key. These days, everyone is using VS Code. To use VS Code for Outward Key, it's best to install an extension. So here on the extension tab, we can search for outward key and we found quite a few. So the first one here, I guess this one is only for version one. And this plus plus here should be an extension from the first one. And if you go back on the website and search for this one, like outward key with VS Code, you will as well find the outward key plus plus. But I had some issues with this one. It's not running smoothly. So I switched recently to this one here. And so far for now, it works for me fine. So go here to the Explorer. We can close that one and create our first file. I will call it intro, then dot a h key. Have to be ending like that to run this as an outward key script. So the first thing I want to demonstrate is like variables, where it's uh, quite easy. Like I create here my variable name and then to add some stuff in there, I use a colon and an equal sign and then I can add a string or integers. Here I have a function for the message box and where I will output this variable. So if you install the same extension like me, you can just hit Control and F5. And then we get the message box with hello outward key, what you just put in here. The best part for an outward key, what I think is like the hot strings and the hot key. So hot key is meaning I can remap any keys on Windows where I want to do some stuff. By the way, like with the semicolon, you do comments. So with the caret symbol, it's like the control and the exclamation mark is ALT and the T for T. And then here in double colon, I have my abbreviation BTW and it gets out by the way. So let's run that one. And if you have an app like that, it always runs in the background. It's never closed. So, and when I hit now the shortcut Control Alt T, open here my editor and then BTW, and then I can hit space, tab or return and I got my approbation by the way. So let's close that one. So the next one is some mouse movements. And here I simulate a right click with click and then right, so quite easy. And mouse move, the X and the Y. So let's put it like here. Then I run this program with Control F5. Now I get the message that are an older instance once. That's like from the example before. I hit return. And now you can see my mouse moved here to the left side and the context menu opened. So that's easy like that. So I can do certain mouse movements and to best demonstrate that would be in a loop. So what does this loop do is quite easy. It runs a message box five times, very annoying, to entry. And the index I get here from the A index, that's like a variable in outward key. So let's control copy that one. Then open the browser again, go here to outward key, to the documentation. We want to use version two. 
And if you search for some stuff and coming here to version one, you can easily change that here from version uh, one then to version two. Here I have my search, then the index. Double click on that one. And this is actually what it does. And you can see here, there are quite a few predefined variables to do certain stuff. So let's keep going with our examples. Then we have if statements. Here as well, like a predefined variable is admin. And here I just asking the system, if I'm an admin, get this out. If not, then do that one. And of course, I'm not running as an administrator. The next one would like a simple function. And here I create a function, my function, same like uh, many other programming language, then the message box again, this is a function, and then I call it, and then I get out, this is a function. And here my favorite part of outward key, the GUIs, what is here quite easy. So I just create like a variable where I put my GUI object, and then I add some form fields, so let's run that one. And that's how it looks like. I'd like, please enter your name. That's what everything does here, but I do no, uh, nothing with it. And as well, I can do certain stuff more. And I can even like quite easily get it out as an executable, right click and compile the script. And when I open now the browser, I can start that here. As well, I can right click here, compile the script with the GUI, and here I can even add in my custom. I have here already the complete pass in there. Best thing is here going on the website, checking out the, the basic stuff here, or going here as well to the graphical user interface, the GUI stuff. And here we have the GUI object. And if you're going back to the version one, you will find out that they did not call it here an object. So that's all for me for this quick intro. If you liked it and would like to see more about OutHotKey, let me know in the comments. I also appreciate if you like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.